Welcome to Let's Talk About CRPS, a podcast brought to you by MTI directly from Italy. We will talk about the latest news and treatments, patients' experiences, and exclusive interviews of CRPS experts. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, crps-treatment.com. Let's take off. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome to this new episode of Let's Talk About CRPS. This is your host, Emily, and today with us we have Tanner. Hi, Tanner. Hi, Emily. Hi, why don't you present yourself for um, everyone listening to the podcast? Hi, everyone. My name is Tanner Byers. I am from Michigan in the United States. How old are you? I'm 20. Okay. So how long have you had CRPS for? Um, About seven years. I got diagnosed just after I turned 13. Okay. So what, what triggered your CRPS? I was in a snowmobiling accident. Okay. And I I crashed and I got T-boned and the snowmobile hit my ankle mm-hmm. and broke my uh tibia and fibula growth plates. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what what was the the affected area then? Uh so it was my ankle okay. and then um it eventually spread. Okay, so it was going up the leg. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay was it was it difficult to get a diagnosis or did you did you manage to get a diagnosis pretty quickly no it was it was pretty difficult because um especially then and where I live okay. there, I don't live in the biggest town okay. it, most people would consider it a small town and so our, our hospital is is it's not small but um they didn't, they've never really s- seen it before, so they didn't really know mm-hmm. what was wrong because, like, structurally and everything, I was fine. Yeah. But obviously, I was still having pain. And mm-hmm. so no one really no one really knew. I went to a couple different specialists. Um, and then I'm pretty sure it was a, um, ph- a PA, physician's assistant, that event- eventually ended up diagnosing me. Okay, and do you remember? Uh, do you remember what exams he did to give you the diagnosis? Um, it was a lot of, a lot of, like touching and moving, mm-hmm. um, my ankle, and that was just when it was in my ankle. So, um, yeah, I I don't exactly remember, but I I know it was mostly just touching and feeling, and then other things he thought it was mm-hmm. it didn't end up being that so he yeah. just was like oh okay mm-hmm. probably rsd or crps yeah no that's i mean that's basically how it is uh diagnosed right now it's just kind of understanding if it can be another condition and if it's not then we have the budapest criteria which i'm i'm thinking is probably what he did um because yeah. there's a lot of touching just to understand you know mm-hmm. sensitivity and everything so that's probably that's probably what he did um yeah. so you were really young so how how was crps affecting your life back then um a lot different than it is now mm. so back then it was only in my ankle and it it like it hurt and it was uncomfortable but i could still run and jump and and do a, a, my normal things mm-hmm. just slightly uncomfortable yeah um and then in 2021 Mm -hmm. I went to New York I guess I'm sorry I should backtrack a little bit my sophomore year of high school so 2019 Mm -hmm. um I it got to the point to where in my my ankle was hurting so bad that I couldn't I couldn't really run anymore I could in spurts but not for a long time and at this time I was a three spurts sport athlete sometimes four so I was doing stuff year round and I was super active Mm -hmm. and um I had to stop playing football because I couldn't really I couldn't run for that long um and then I had to stop playing basketball because I couldn't you know run or jump really Mm -hmm. that much and with practices and everything it just was too much same with wrestling and then eventually baseball um, so I, 
my senior year, I wasn't playing any sports. And in my junior year, so in 2021, we went to New York. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, when I was on that trip, it spiked. My CRPS spiked. Okay. And so, like, automatically, it was about a probably about a 50% increase in pain mm -hmm. from what it was at. Wow. And it was just from walking around, really, I think, because I didn't hit it on anything. I didn't twist my ankle or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just walking. And I had done that in the past. Like, we go to Chicago and Florida, whatever, go on other trips. But I guess for whatever reason in New York, it spiked. Mm -hmm. And then, I'm trying to think, it started to, it started to, really be like fully crps instead of just like a little bit mm -hmm. so it, it started spreading in waves of sensitivity on my skin mm -hmm. and like inner nerve pain so it started spreading up and eventually got to my whole body and now i have hot spots at my ankle and my collarbone mm -hmm. and my whole body like my skin is still sensitive mm -hmm obviously nothing like what it was yeah so in the states what um what treatment were advised to you and which one did you actually undertake so we tr we tried a lot of different things um basically everything we tried acupuncture mm -hmm. we tried um did that help? therapy uh it i don't I just remember the needles hurting, really. Okay, yeah. I, I don't really remember getting any relief. I think mm -hmm. I got more relief from the magnetic therapy. Mm -hmm. um, but that was only like a while I was doing it kind of thing. Okay. And I only did it one time. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it just, like, it didn't help a lot. So, I, um, and then we did, I mean, I tried, I was on gabapentin. Mm -hmm. you know what that is yeah right? yeah yeah I'm sure you do <laughs> I was on that for a while I don't exactly remember how long probably probably close to a year okay um and then I stopped that because it wasn't really helping mm -hmm. and of course now is when I forget all the treatments that I've done <laughs> but I mean I recently just did a PEMF mat and red light therapy mm -hmm. and that felt good okay while I was doing it um but yeah I've, I've tried basically everything mm -hmm. and then so I would at one point did you decide to come to Italy I um really it was my mom mm -hmm. uh she you know she was doing all this research too and my dad too yeah um, but she she's in the medical field she's a physical therapist oh okay oh you're lucky <laughs> oh I know yes I know um and so she has connections and people have re people reached out to her and told her about MTI or maybe she saw it on a Facebook uh uh the like a CRPS group mm -hmm. whatever and then at this time I was using a cane to walk mm -hmm. and really I couldn't really walk so I was in a like when I came to Italy I was in a wheelchair and got pushed everywhere and I couldn't walk mm. except for a very little bit with my cane yeah and so we my mom was like she just yeah. couldn't stand to see me like yeah, that of course. or my dad and you know so they were like we're going mm-hmm so your mom is a physical therapist did you see the physical therapist here in italy mm -hmm. yeah. and how how was it did she see any difference did you see any difference um it was just like obviously like my mom doesn't focus on treating crps patients yeah of course and so she wanted to get someone with more expertise yeah so she was watching and asking questions uh to the therapist when he was working on me mm -hmm. so I, I mean I just noticed it was a more um centered towards my ankle yeah 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 of course 
Um, and so generally, how was how was your experience in Italy? Well, it, you guys and everything, it was it was awesome. It was really cool and very inviting, very like loving, and they or you guys try to make you feel as comfortable as you as you can. Yeah. And it that really helped because you know it's very uh, a stressful time mm -hmm. and not easy. So I think you guys offer the best experience that you can have while in that scenario. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Did you see anything? Did you get to see a bit around? Did you do some tourism? A little bit. Yeah. We went to um. Lake Garda, yeah, and that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we also went to uh, the Verona. Yes, yeah, yeah, Romeo and Juliet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's the city yeah, of that... Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, was it yeah. the first time you were you went to Italy? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, first time for me. My mom and my sister actually went like eight months before we ended up going. Oh, okay. It was my first time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what what made it different from the other treatment that you've you you did before that? Well, the main thing I noticed right away is you guys were very confident and knew what you were doing mm -hmm. versus in the States, like no one knows what to do for CRPS. Like mm -hmm. they just wanna put you in a Uh, facility like like pain management want, yeah pain management mm -hmm. instead of relief and that's not what I'm I'm gonna get relief not manage it so yeah 100%. I mean obviously you have to manage it yeah but I, that amount of pain I wasn't mm -mm. yeah and I'm still not done but yeah so what were the results of the treatment then it it helped a lot I for example I don't use a cane anymore mm -hmm. And when I was there, I, I had to like roll my shorts up and I had to, I mean, my, I actually just got a haircut, but my hair is not as short as it was when I was there. I couldn't have, um, long hair because it would hurt on my face and neck and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and now I'm, I would say from where I was to where I am now to where I want to be mm -hmm. I'm like halfway okay and I I would say most of that is from you guys all right yeah okay because I still can't I'm still not good mm -hmm. but I am so much better and yeah. can yeah it's a it's a lot better mm -hmm. than what it was so just a reminder when you came to Italy then you you've had CRPS for what seven years then yes yeah okay mm -hmm. and really it got it it was it was fine and manageable until the spike in new york in new york yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then then it was unbearable yeah or it like just kept growing you know did you did you see any difference between like your clinical experience like the, the experience you've had in the clinic with the the medical staff that you saw um between Italy and the states? Yeah, they in the states they want you or like they obviously like they don't know so they are trying to put you on all these different medications that mm -hmm. they think are going to help um but I've, I've never been big into just taking pills and medicine. So yeah. I would prefer to do it a more like natural way, especially for this like CRPS, because mm -hmm. there's not really a certain way to treat it. So I found the more natural and like body connected ways help a lot more than medicine. Yes. For, like, 100%. You know what I mean? a hundred percent that's something yeah. we're trying to you know pass the message for to all the patients that we see and that we talk mm -hmm. to really on a, on a regular it's just we've heard that you know the states are very focused on 
pain medicine and just yeah pain management and just trying to kind of like put a bandage on the pain and just you know exactly kind of teach you to live through get it used to it yeah exactly um yeah no it... which is not what you want to do you know what mm i mean you want to you want to try to go on on the actual issue and try to fix that of course exactly the pain med is is helping because it is an unbearable pain but it can't be the only solution you have to have an actual treatment and it has to be a multidisciplinary treatment because it cannot just be one thing no um even with neurogenate you know it's super important to have you know physical therapy your mom will tell you that <laughs> um oh yeah i do i do like five different types of recovery and treatment daily so yeah it yeah is that something your mom um kind of pushed you with yeah i i'd say it was kind of her my dad and and me too they definitely pushed me towards it a little more mm. just to kind of do everything i can because every little thing you do can add up or like it does add up yeah and so i use i use a uh i i do brain training to try and learn about pain and see i mean not just crps but like pain and how pain is formed and what what affects pain and like all this different brain pain related stuff Mm -hmm. and so i've been trying to well i have been doing research trying to further my knowledge on that topic because the more you understand the better you are at at actually doing it and doing it right so you get you get results from it Yeah. obviously important that you work as hard as you can to try and understand what's going on because you know it's if you don't understand you're just even more confused than you already are Yeah, hundred percent. and that just makes it worse so so i still have a ways to go but Mm -hmm. i i italy was worth it and i recommend it to anyone with crps without question Yeah. Would you have um, a final message um, to end this episode for for anyone with CRPS or anyone who knows someone with CRPS listening? yeah i first of all just be understanding if if you know someone with it be understanding just be there for them because there's going to be times when you want to help and you can't you just have to be there and let them know you're there and if you have it really the main thing you have to be positive you have to focus on the positives because if you don't there's way too many negatives to focus on and you'll go in a rabbit hole and it won't be good you eventually there's a lot of people that don't get out of that rabbit hole and i personally i'm a man of faith and so i pray a lot about it and i you know my church and everything they so i think that's a really big part you got to pray about it i think god has a plan and whatever reason i have this hopefully i can maybe help people with it one day um i don't know what the reason is but i i just have to stay positive and focus on what i'm doing to get better and obviously you have to you can't ever you cannot ever stop trying to get better you always have to be doing something to get better even if you feel like you've improved a lot there's like because like it it becomes a normalcy like it's it's normal for me to be like in pain every second so like you you just kind of you don't forget but it's it you're like Mm -hmm. well, get used why to it why would i try and help it if it's not going to go away you just can't think like that because it and don't get me wrong sometimes you do but you just have to snap out of it because if you stay in there you there's a good chance you don't get out of the rabbit hole again so stay positive work extremely hard on getting better and make sure you have people close to you because it's a very very lonely and frightening experience but
if you have people like that, it, it helps. Right. You're very wise for your age. I feel like I don't know if you've always been like this or if you this whole experience have made you very but you're very, very wise and very thank you. You have a lot of knowledge on, you know, what you're talking about. You can feel that you're not just letting it happen to you. You're just kind of okay, this is happening to me, but I'm gonna hold it in my hand and just like walk together. I'm not gonna just exactly. let it walk. You don't let it control me. you. You can't can't i can feel it from just you know talking to you for 10 minutes so very okay. very powerful very powerful thank you thank you so much for yeah, um course. being on the podcast with me thank you so much for having me of course and uh, for everyone else i'll see you next week on the next episode of let's talk about crps and let's say bye to tanner thank you so much again yeah thank you bye guys bye bye bye